Hello YouTube, Siegfried Trulane here, and today we are going to be introducing you to a Red Mage, well, to a Final Fantasy XIV Red Mage guide. It's been a while since I made one of these guides, so stick with me. Anyways, in the guide we're going to be going over the introduction of the class, where to unlock it, basic play style, some things to watch out for, the traits and skills, the quest line locations, a basic rotation for it, the rotation is not too hard, and then the macros and tips, that can be very helpful for this class. Uh, first of all, Red Mage. This is probably, in my personal opinion, having played every single class up to 60, I would say that at level 60 this class was the strongest. Well, I haven't checked Samurai to be fair. Samurai's only 53. But everything other than the Samurai, level 60, this was physically the strongest. But usability, it is by far the strongest. And at level 70, I'm pretty sure that will still stay. I will explain why as we get the traits and skills. In order to unlock this class, you have to go to the Steps of Nald. So, I'm going to show you pretty much where to unlock him, unlock this class, so that if you are not sure where to unlock, because I get a lot of questions of where do I go to unlock it, I'm going to show you. Um, this actually might be the Steps of Fall, I'm not exactly which the name is, but I do know the exact, about the area you find him. Now, with patch 4.0, they threw a new Aetherite, so I can actually teleport, but it's going to be near the Market Center. So, we are going to go and just jump straight to the Market Center, so you can see a about the area you find him. Oh, crap. Hold on. We're gonna go to... This is Sorry. <clears throat> right. So this is about the area where you're going to find him at. He should be, I believe, over in this vicinity. Is and you're gonna find like a maid, a distressed maid, and you talk to her. You talk to her, and she will lead, give you the quest line. You'll you'll find him out there. Very easy to unlock. You'll just have to watch him beat somebody. It's pretty cool to watch. So this is where you will unlock him in this this area. So just open up a map, find his quest line. Um, it's something something red. Let me take a look at the quest line for you, actually. I should be able to find it, so you can see exactly what you need to do. Should be job There you go. Or maybe... Ah, oh, here we go. Just another magic job quest. So the quest you're going to be looking for is... Taking the red. This is the quest you want to find. So that's the quest you're looking for there. Alright, with that done, let's go ahead and head back onto the, uh... Area I'm back to the company, house I'm with right now. We're gonna go over some basic stuff with the red mage. Now again, the red mage is a casting class that utilizes both re uh, white magic, black magic, and melee damage. When you get this class, it will start at level 50, which will give you ver fire, ver earth, ver thunder, ver arrow, corpse of corpse, displacement, um, repose, ver chow, and redoublement. You will have pretty much your entire combo that far done. Uh, you will also have acceleration. You will not have manifestation. Contra 6th and Bolden Diversion. You should have Fletch. Um, you will not have Veracure or Veraze at level 50. And you will not have Molinet. You will have Scatter though. So, um, the first thing we should take a look, we're going to take a look at is pretty much how it plays. Again, you switch between like for Air and for Thunder and the white and the black. And then when you get a total of 80 points, you're going to be running the combo. Now, pre-68, you just have to be 80, doesn't matter what. After 68, you are going to want to have one lower than the other, but not by a great deal, by about a few points. Usually, if you can get like an 8, it'd be 5 to 10 points above 80, that's great. Also, the cast time, if you look at the skills, the cast time on for Thunder and for Arrow are extremely long. 4.8 second cast time, way too long. So, 
we're gonna take a look at our first trait as that's gonna be very important to how this class plays it's dual cast pretty much after you cast one spell the next spell has no cast time as long as the spell had a hard cast so the trick to this is to use jolt which has a two second cast time and then use the free cast um, from the dual cast trait to use the error for thunder and then if that procs verse stone over fire instead of using jolt you're going to use the verse stone over fire respectively it's pretty basic once you get used to it so basically in short the basics of how you play this is jolt for arrow jolt for thunder for fire for earth proc use that instead you get 80 points Corpse of Corpse, Repost, Zavaritary, Redoublement, Displacement. Popping Fletch and Contra Six, and when they are off cooldown. Contra Six is an AoE attack, but it has a 300 potency, which means it's still useful on boss fights. And Fletch has a 450 potency, so Fletch is pretty good. Some cautions with this class before we really get into the traits and the skills is that this class is an aggro build, is an aggro monster it takes so much enmity you need to have enough enmity um cooldowns to cool keep your enmity down because i've taken hate just with my combo the combo does a lot and that was before having flare or holy so you definitely need to have uh lucid dreaming and diversion on i i can't push that enough um so let's go and take a look at traits i mean we'll actually get yeah, traits First you have dual cast, which I've already gone through, allows the second spell to have no cast time. It has intelligence, basically increases your intelligence, maybe men increasing your damage and HP restoration. Enhance jolt, upgrades jolt to jolt 2, and then jolt 2 can now give, will now give you the effect of impactful when you hit with the jolt 2. Nothing special here, pretty basic, straightforward. Before we go into the job, we're going to go into the roll though. Now we have all these different skills hill here. Usually on a cast you have swift cast, but because of the effect of dual cast, this is not useful. Don't take it. Ah, uh, break. Just really, again, a not a useful skill. Maybe if you're doing solo stuff, but even solo stuff I don't find this useful. Drain, again, not useful. It's a waste of MP. You're doing really little damage just to give yourself a small little cure. And with the very cure, it's not necessary. Mana shift. Debatable, um, I would say more for Black Mage. This class, MP can be an issue when the fight goes too long or if you're having to raise too much, so I don't, I would not take this just because your MP is gonna be precious. And then Erase could probably have raid utility, but I prefer the other ones I took as I'm not really, well, there's no hardcore raiding right yet. The ones I take, Addl lowers intelligence by, and mine by 10%. Very useful on magic casting bosses. Lucid Dreaming. Reduces enemy to by half and grants the refresh. The enemy reduction is really nice, but the real reason we want this is for the refresh. We want to get our MP back up, so it's really useful for that. Diversion. Reduces enemy generated generation. This is, again, a really useful skill to ensure that you're not taking too much hate. You should have it on. Apocatostasis. Again, this is from the Black Mage. Reducing... A member is magical there by 20%, a very useful raid utility. And share cast finally is useful. Um, it nullifies knockback and draw on effects. That's the big reason. I mean, it does allow me to cast my spell without interruptions, which is useful, but the big reason is it's a short cooldown and the nullifying knockback makes it a really good spell. <clears throat> so those are the five I take. You could probably switch Addle for Erase, depending on your raid utility. Um, the other thing is that none of these skills actually get level synced anymore, so you'll be able to use all these skills even in the basic levels. So with that said, uh, we're going to move on to our job traits. First, we're going to look at magic. You have Jolt and Jolt 2. When you hit level 62, your Jolt becomes Jolt 2. The only thing you get is the impactful status and the damage goes from 180 to 240. So in other words, it's a, team, it's a damage increase. <clears throat> and then it can, it can then proc impact. Impact is very similar to Jolt, except it increases your mana by four, both white and black by four, and increases the damage potency to 270. 
So it's 30% potency higher and you get one more point in that. Those are your main triggers when your Ver Fire and Ver Earth do not proc. If <clears throat> Ver Fire, Ver Earth, or sorry, Ver Stone and Ver Earth proc, you will use this instead. They do 270 just like Impact, but they give 9 to their respective elements. So Ver Stone, 9 to White, Ver Fire, 9 to uh, Black. After using one of these skills, you will always use Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow, which actually have a potency of 300, so these basic skills are technically stronger. But, because of their cast time, you have an issue. They increase black mana or white mana by 11, and you have a 50 chance of it becoming a Ver Fire or Ver Stone ready. Tether, completely useless, I don't even touch it. I watch, I guess I can now, because I actually have a free spot. So Tether will go ahead and go here. But realistically, I wouldn't, I'm never gonna use Tether. Next, we have our last set of, and, uh, these are the last skills, Verholy and Verflare. <clears throat> now, Verholy and Verflare have a 20% chance of becoming Verstone over Fire. They have a potency of 550, and they increase your mana by 21. However, if you use it when the opposite element is higher, so for example, Verholy when black is higher, or Verfire when white is higher, you have a 100% chance to get the Verse Stone and Verfire, Fire, meaning this actually is an easy 30 points up. But this can only be casted after an enchanted redoublement, which we will go over in a bit. That covers your basic spells for single target. Melee-wise, it's pretty much just going to be spamming scatter. I like to go when I get 9, and then I switch to the... Um, Moulinet, and I'll explain that in a bit. Scatter has a chance to become an enhanced scatter, which changes the uh, increased black and white mana from 3 to 8. So that's actually pretty nice, and there's a 25% chance. It does proc quite a bit. Now we're going to take a look at our uh, um, melee attacks. Now you have Repulsal, Repulse, Corpse of Corpse, Fair Chow, Displacement and Redoublement. Um, we're going to go take a look at Displacement of Corpse Corpse first. Corpse Corpse has a 130 potency and it allows you to rush to your target, while Displacement has a 130 and it allows you to back off from the target. And now once you have the 80 points in your white and black, you're going to want to use the Enchanted Repost, which has a deals aspect damage of potency of 210, which will then combo into the Enchanted Fair Chow, which does 290. Which then combos into Enchanted Redoublement, Redoublement, which does 470, and will then allow us to use either Verflare or Verholy, in which we choose which one we is better. Verflare and Verholy also should say that they have an instant cast time, which is pretty OP. This covers your melee and your spells. So now we're gonna take a look at some other OGCD moves. We have Fletch, which has a potency of 420 and a 25 second cooldown, an amazing skill. And Contra 6, which is a 300 potency to all enemies, 10% to the left second, 1 to the third, 30% to the fourth, 40 to the fifth, and 50%, so on. 45 second cooldown, really quick. Those are our two attack OGCD moves that we weave in between the moves. Buff wise, you have Acceleration, which ensures the next Ver Thunder Ver Arrow will allow you to get the Ver Fire for the Stone ready. 35 second cooldown, very useful, especially if you're going to be using Manification. Manification doubles the current black and white mana levels, resets the Corpse of Corpse and Displacement timers, allowing you to do your entire combo twice in a row rather quickly. The last one, Embolden, increases your magic damage by 10%, and also increases the damage of all nearby enemies by 10%. However, the effects are reduced by 20% every 4 seconds, so in other words, it's 20, 8, uh, 8, sorry, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. You usually want to weave this in right before re Enchanted Redoublement and Verflare or Verholy. That's going to be the biggest attack time period. That covers our OGCD moves. Um, let's go take a look at Tether quick, finds targets and all nearby enemies, completely useless in almost everything. The last one we're going to be taking a look at is our recovery spells. Verkir has a cure point to 350, 
I'm gonna show the difference between that and between what we've known from Summoner's Cures in the past. And then of course you have Berets, which allows you to raise a target to a weakened state. Now, one thing that makes the Red Mage's Rays a million times better than any other Rays, other than the, you know, I mean, yeah, it has a huge MP cost, which sucks, but this Rays can be swift casted. All you gotta do is you do your cure, and then you swift cast it. Cure, swift cast it. If you have two people dead and you have enough MP, you can literally cast it once and then immediately cast it a second time. But the MP cost of 3,600 is very punishing, so you aren't gonna be able to do that that much. <clears throat> that's half your MP right there, and that's not good. Um, with that, that covers our spells and our traits. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the rotation. Now again, the rotation is going to be Jolt, and then a white or black, and then unless we're Stone for Flare, Impact, okay? Actually, before rotation, let's go into the macro, because that's gonna probably confuse you guys. So macros are what? There are two macros I use. My first macro is I, my bolt, my dash in and my make distance attack, the corpse to corpse and displacement. By putting those on the same button, you can actually utilize those on one button. And I've done the same thing with impact and jolt. This allows me to actually use jolt or impact without having to sacrifice a button as you can't use impact unless Jolt has proc. So it works really well. So, those are the two macros you can use. If you need to look at them, please, you can rewind and pause. I'm gonna go through a quick basic rundown of this, the uh, rotation here. So again, you start with a Jolt 2, then you use your first element. I have not had a Burst Stone or a Burst Fire, so I'm not gonna attack. And I'll use the opposite element. There's my Burst Fire, so now I'm going to use Burst Fire. And we're going to use the other. So you see I'm 29, 27. This is a good point I want to stay at. If it's possible to stay at this, it'd be great. And I just keep balancing it up. Until I get to 40 mark. Maybe 80 mark. Let. One very important thing is do not let your points get over, do not let it get over the 60 mark. If it gets over the 60 mark, I'm sorry, don't, do not let it get over 30. If it gets over 30, you'll start gaining half of the other. So now we're at 83 and 100, we're going to go and do a quick combo. I'm going to corpse the corpse in. Holy. Switch back in. My emboldens up, so I actually have to do damage. It has them down a bit though, but I made sure to get the both my holy and my intensive damage in that phase. Now this time we're gonna have the white go higher and do the flare. In. One, two, three, out, and now we do flare. And you can see that pops the other one. Now all we gotta do is we're just going to get into halfway, because once I get to halfway, I can actually pop a uh, magnification, and that will allow me to really get it more than enough. I think I can do one more. This is pretty much the way the class is supposed to play. It's really simple, it doesn't take much work to do, it's just more making sure you keep that balance and making sure you don't jump off legends. That's a big one. Because of the jump, it will be easy to jump off legends. Also, one downside to having your jolt and impact macro is sometimes it will mess up and activate the other one. It happens, it's something I deal with, but does happen. It's a really fun class, it's really strong. If you look at this, check out this holy, the holy is amazing. 
Anyway, that is exactly, this is pretty much the basic how the class plays. Not a hard class, just you gotta watch this bar and make sure you balance everything correctly, as well as your mana and keep using Lucid Dreaming as much as possible so that you're gaining mana and not wasting any part of it, but that you're also not here when you pop it the first time because that'll be too late. So with that done, we're going to go and take a look at the quest location. Now the first time you pick the quest will be up in Ula where I showed you. However, after that the quest tends to go to, if I remember correctly, it should be in Western Lanoskia, Western Lanoskia Aeoport, I believe is where the next one pops. So all the quests will pop in this vicinity. And this is where your level 50 to 60 quests are going to pop. If they don't pop here, the next area will be Mordona. But they're gonna pop between here, here and over in this area, right over here. This is where you'll see you can see your quests. The 50 to 60 quest will appear in Idleshire, right by where you buy your gear from Heaven's Word with the toes. And this one will pop up to level... The 67 quest will be the last one to pop here. After the 67 quest, you need to then turn and start... You'll, your next area will be in the... in Ishgard by the last vigil. I will show you exactly where that's at. So the second one will be... Not this way. Right over here. This is where the second quest pops. And then your last quest. Will pop. Over here. This is where the last quest pops, right in this area. <clears throat> so if you're stuck looking, this is where this goes. Anyways, that pretty much takes makes up for the, the video. Just remember that when you're playing as a red mage, the biggest thing is ensure that you're keeping up diversion and lucid dreaming. Don't be like most red mages who just go in, tear it up, and then take hate because they're not popping cooldowns. We all have cooldowns for a reason. Make sure you start using them. If you have any other questions or anything you'd like to see, please feel free to message in the comments. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I will be doing a build video for most of the classes in this game as soon as I get them to 70. This is Sick Lane. Thank you for watching.